Hey, it's great to have you guys gather together in Life Group, especially as we're starting into a new year. Gathering together with others is so important because we don't ever want to fight alone. We are talking about the warrior, and I pray that this message series would inspire all of you to recognize that Christianity is not a playground, it's a battleground. We battle not against flesh and blood, but against the powers and principalities of this dark world. So in this message series, we're gonna see that Jesus wasn't just a meek and mild guy that played with lambs and let kids crawl up in his lap, but when he returns, he returns really making war against the enemy, um, taking back the ground that Satan's tried to take for years and years and years. And ultimately, the good news is our warrior, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, he wins the war. We're gonna dive into more specific questions about the warrior, but to start things off, it's a new year, and hopefully you wanna change something in your life for the better, to become more like Christ, to become more generous, um, maybe to get in better shape, to honor God with your temple, whatever it is, you've probably got a New Year's resolution. If you don't, think fast, because I'm about to ask you what it is. I'd love for you to go around the room and talk about what's one thing that you're trying to change in your life this year. For me, generally, I'm adding something. I'm adding a discipline. This year, I'm cutting back. What I've recognized is over the years, I've added and added and added and added. And the truth is, there are very few things that I do that really make a big, big difference, and those few things matter more and more and more. So I'm cutting back and eliminating a lot of the little things, some of the smaller things, some of the things I've just done because I've always done them before. So I'm aggressively pruning. If you don't clean out your closet, it will eventually be overrun. That's kind of the way my life is right now. This year, instead of adding, I'm cutting back. Go ahead and take a moment, pause this, go around the room and talk about what's the one thing you're working to change this year? All right, let's dive into the next question. And in the first week, we talked about really two qualities of every warrior. We know we're talking specifically to men, but the truth of the matter is that women, they can fight too and need to fight. We all have fight in us that we need to win. We talked about the two big qualities. One is that we have someone to protect. The second thing is we have a kingdom to advance. You may want to take a moment and reread Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 14. You may even read a few verses before that just to fully get the context. But what I love about this is you see Nehemiah really with the heart to protect uh, the people that he cares about. And he talks about who he's going to fight for. I'd love to know who you're fighting for. There's someone to protect. Who is it in your life that you really feel called to protect? Now, let me tell you what I know you're probably going to say if you're married you probably really want to protect your spouse. If you have children, I certainly hope you want to protect your children. And those are really good answers, so you can start there. But hopefully, God will give you a heart that goes beyond your home because we serve a big God, and he wants to use us to make a big difference in people's lives. My wife, Amy, has a real heart to protect and nurture women coming out of human trafficking and prison and abusive situations. And the more I've been around her and some of these amazing women who are being healed and becoming incredible warriors, my heart has grown to protect them. I have a real heart to guard and protect, honestly, all women, single moms, um, especially those who are coming out of a difficult situation. And then the church is my heart, meaning as I am a shepherd underneath the good shepherd and my church is my flock, I really wanna do everything I can to preach God's word in a way that impacts your life so you can overcome the temptations of the evil one, the distractions of uh, the, the liar that tries to take you off of God's purpose. And so that's really who I'm trying to protect. I believe every single one of you, God has given you a heart of a warrior. There's someone to protect, someone that you're going to guard against the, um, the forces of this dark world. And so let's go ahead and talk about that. Certainly those closest to you, but maybe God might give you a heart for those beyond. Let's take a moment and talk about it. You have the heart of a warrior. Who is it specifically God is calling you to help protect? All right, let's dive into the third question, and this is where the rubber meets the road. We always try to have some kind of application at this point. We've talked about this. God has created you with the heart of a warrior, meaning there's sometimes someone you're going to protect 
There's a kingdom to advance. The kingdom's not your own. We're trying to just make a difference in the lives of other people. Now, as warriors, how do we do this? Well, sometimes you throw a punch, meaning sometimes you stand up for what's right, you fight back, you get involved, you may get a little bit messy. Sometimes you have to get involved. Jesus did this. He mixed it up with the Pharisees at times. One time he threw over a table. He called the Pharisees some names that were pretty rough. Sometimes you throw a punch. Sometimes you turn a cheek. You have to have the wisdom to know, I'm going to let this go. I'm not going to, I'm not going to throw a punch. I'm going to show mercy. I'm going to show grace. Sometimes you pray a prayer. Some of the most important battles that we fight, we actually fight on our knees. What I want to do is however you're going to fight it, maybe throwing a punch, maybe turning a cheek, maybe praying a prayer, maybe enlisting other warriors to stand with you when you don't feel like you have the strength to stand. What I want to do is talk about your biggest battle. What is it right now? As a warrior, there's a battle to fight. There's a mission to complete. There's something that God is calling you to do, something you're wrestling with, something you're fighting. What is the battle you're fighting, and how is it you're fighting? What is that battle you need to win? Um, in my family, there's a lot going on. We always have the mission of the church. We always have spiritual opposition. We always feel slightly overwhelmed. Right now, we've been battling with health issues of people that we love. Um, I'm of the opinion, most likely, that if our enemy can't get to me directly, he's going to get to people that I love because that weighs on me oftentimes even more than my own life does. These are battles we're fighting. We're fighting with good advice. We're fighting with diet. We're fighting with supplements. We're fighting with prayer like you wouldn't, um, you couldn't believe. We're fighting. This is a battle we're fighting, and we believe with the help of Jesus, we will win. What's your fight? What's your battle? Let's take a time. Take time to go around the room and talk about it, and then make sure you leave time to pray because that's how we fight our real battles. Guess what? You're a warrior. You're the heart of a warrior. God has called you, equipped you to fight. Hey, welcome to another week of Warrior Life Groups. I'm hearing great things about what's going on in your groups and just want to tell you thank you and celebrate the fact that you're getting together and letting iron sharpen iron. This week is tricky. We're talking about the warrior's weakness. A lot of warriors can be easily distracted and have a very real inner battle with one version or another of lust. So let me just make a really strong recommendation at the beginning of this discussion. I would highly recommend that if you're in a mixed life group, meaning there's men and women in your group, I would strongly recommend that you go ahead and just separate for this discussion. Um, men meet with men, women meet with women, and that way it might remove any kind of awkwardness. Maybe there can be a little more transparency in the discussion. If there are married couples, they can discuss uh, privately any issues they have on their own terms, and I think this could be really helpful. So obviously, you can do whatever you want, and I probably won't know, but I strongly recommend it. Let's dive into the first discussion question. We're talking about really the battle for purity. And unfortunately, in the world that we live in today, people are exposed to sexual impurities younger and younger and younger. If you're comfortable talking about it, and again, be very respectful, let's not go into crazy detail, but in very general terms, if you're comfortable talking about it, what was your first exposure to something that was inappropriate? For me, I talked about it was the fifth grade and I saw my friend's Playboy magazines. And this was the beginning of the battle in my mind, fighting for purity. You might have a similar story. You might have had something that's more painful and you don't wanna talk about it. Please feel free to say, I'd rather not talk about it or you can keep it very, very general. But I do think it's helpful just to kind of have an understanding of what's going on in people's lives, um, how the wound started so we can pray for healing in the wound. If you're comfortable, and it's appropriate um, without sharing a lot of detail. Why don't you talk about the first time you were exposed to something that was sexually inappropriate? All right, let's go ahead and get practical in this next question. Uh, I'm gonna encourage you, if you would, read a portion of scripture Read Proverbs chapter 5, verses 7 through 12, and what you're going to see is wisdom in staying away from different types of sexual temptation. And we talked about the reality that all of us can be triggered by certain things. There might be things that you're vulnerable um, around temptation, and I'm not at all, in other areas where I'm weaker and you're really, really strong. And so we have to do is we have to be honest about those things that can trigger us. Where do we potentially fall into trouble. And what I'd love for you to do is to talk about what safeguards you put in your life 
to guard against sexual temptation or any types of vulnerabilities. And this is really important. Now, some of you, honestly, you might say, I don't have any at all. And let's just go ahead and call it what it is. If that's where you are, that's where you are. Um, if you don't, you're way more vulnerable than someone who has wisdom to distance themselves from places that they're weak or vulnerable. This is really what Proverbs 5 is talking about in verses 7 through 12. Stay far away from whatever could be dangerous. So let's get practical. Let's encourage one another um, as open as you feel like you can be. Let's talk about what are the safeguards that you're putting in your life to guard against sexual temptation. Be sure and read Proverbs 5, 7 through 12, and then let's answer the question, what safeguards do you have in place to make sure you stay away from that which could harm you. All right, let's dive into the third question, and this is where we're going to really look for our next steps. And then make sure you leave time to pray together at the end of this question. It's super, super, super important uh, that we pray for one another. We talked about the principle this, that you're only as strong as you are honest. One of the reasons why I ask you to separate with men, um, only with men and women, only with women, is so that perhaps you'd be in an environment where you could really, really be honest. And I wanna encourage you to really, really be honest. What's interesting is we can often lie to ourselves. We talked about King David in the story, and King David probably lied to himself multiple times saying this isn't that big of a deal, I kinda of deserve it, no one's gonna really know, and he made bad decision after bad decision. He wasn't where he was supposed to be, he saw something he wasn't supposed to see, he did something he wasn't supposed to do, he ended, a lot of people ended up losing something they weren't supposed to lose. He wasn't honest. Then, if you know the story, he went down this long string of bad decisions trying to bring back Bathsheba's husband, Uriah, so that he could be with Bathsheba and then Uriah would think, oh, that must be my baby. And then when Uriah was too godly and didn't betray his men, he stayed um, away from his wife so he couldn't enjoy that kind of intimacy when his men couldn't. And then King David sent Uriah out the front lines and essentially had him murdered in battle. Very, very tragic. David evidently didn't take this to heart because time went on when he was confronted by the prophet Nathan and Nathan told him this story. Essentially, it was about a rich guy that took advantage of a poor guy's little lamb, and David got really, really mad. The Bible says he burned with anger. This is not right. And Nathan the prophet looked at King David and he said, you are the man. You're the one who's done wrong. And if I can just say as lovingly as I can right now to some of you, you might be the man or you might be the woman that really needs to be honest with yourself right now, and you really need to get help. Um, I pray that you don't feel shamed. If this is a dark spot for you, it will be for many people. Don't feel shamed, see it for what it is. You have a wound, and that wound needs to be healed. And it's not gonna heal on its own. We've gotta protect the wound, surround yourself with the right people, the right systems, so that God can heal the wound. What do we do? Well, battle plan. We confess to God, so important, God I've sinned. We confess to the appropriate people, and that may be what you do in your groups today. We get the help that we need. We surround ourselves with the right kind of people and we let God heal the wound. What I wanna do is just ask you, is there something that you need to be honest about? Do you need help? Do you need to confess? Do you need people around you to help hold you accountable? Do you need to check yourself in for treatment? Do you need to apologize? Do you need to repent? Do you need safeguards around you? This is really, really, really important. Some of you, you know that God is kind of moving on you. This is your opportunity. This is your time. This is why we do life groups. You're in a safe place with people that love you right now with a good God who brings healing. You're only as strong as you are honest. Is there something that you need to confess? Is there a step? Hey, it's great to have you back for week number two of life groups discussing the warrior. And I wanna welcome all of our warriors. Uh, both the men warriors and the lady warriors, we know beyond a shadow of a doubt that every single one of you, you've got the heart to protect someone, you've got someone to protect, you've got a kingdom to advance, and you've got a battle to win. In the second week of the warrior, we talked about the hesitant warrior, Gideon, and we looked at killing your inner coward. We had three big thoughts, and what I wanna do today is I wanna just kinda give you an overview again of those three thoughts, and then we're going to do three different discussion questions that hopefully will give you the chance just to kind of open up, and then we wanna save time at the end to pray together because 
our greatest weapon as spiritual warriors is always the Word of God, the sword of the Spirit, and the faith we have to go before God in prayer. And so let's leave time to pray for one another. It'll be the most important thing we do um, in life group. Big thanks to those of you that are hosting, and I'm so glad to have many new people gathering together in life groups. What did we talk about? We talked about Gideon, the warrior that was afraid, the warrior that was insecure. He was bold in his faith, he worshiped the one true God, and yet he was scared to death of the Midianites. He was hiding, threshing wheat, making deals with God, uh, bargaining, and uh, he really was confident at times and incredibly insecure at other times, much like many other warriors I know. Three big thoughts we had in the message. Number one, that every warrior fights the inner fear of failure. In your life, there's something some area you're afraid you're not gonna measure up, not be good enough, that you might fail at something. Number two, we talked about this. In Christ, you have everything you need to fight and win. Not on your own, but in Christ. You have the spiritual weapons, you have everything you need for life and godliness, the scripture says. And number three, we looked at the reality that with God, the way forward often starts with a step backward. Three big thoughts, which will lead us to three questions and then time to pray. Let's start with the first thought. That is, every warrior fights the inner fear of failures. All of us as warriors, men and women, um, if we're parents, if we're a student, if we're trying to be a bold witness, if we're trying to launch a business, if we're trying to lead a small group, we often feel insecure about something. What I'd like for you to do is have the courage today to talk about what is that big insecurity that often holds you back from doing what God's calling you to do? What's your big insecurity? For me, I've talked about it before and it just doesn't seem to go away. I always have this fear of inadequacy. And the biggest thing for me, quite honestly, is I'm now into the 25th year. We just passed uh, year 24, just last week, the 24th anniversary of Life Church. And weekends come really, really fast. And I feel um, just personally a real pressure to accurately communicate scripture in a way that engages people and moves people spiritually. There's a lot of pressure I feel. Can I do it again? And the truth is, it's not really mine to do. It's the work of the Spirit through me, through the living Word of God. And yet, as a human being, I feel that pressure. Am I going to have what it takes? Um, it's real, it's an ongoing battle, it's an insecurity. And that's why I need to remember part number two, and that is, in Christ, I have everything that I need. So I'd love for you to take a moment and talk about that. We all have those insecurities. God's calling you to do something. What is the big insecurity that often holds you back? Let's discuss it, and then we'll come back and move forward spiritually. Well, I'm always thankful when people are open and transparent in our life groups. Uh, there's no other way to do life than to really um, open up and to bear our burdens with one another. So as you're talking about your insecurities, I know that um, that can really bond a group together. The first thought in uh, our message was this, that every warrior fights the inner fear of failure. Second thought is this, and this is really good news. In Christ, you have everything that you need to fight and win. You have everything you need to fight and win. In fact, scripture says this, that you have everything you need for life and godliness. I love that, that God's not sitting in heaven saying, oh, I'm gonna hold back something you need to be really effective. I'm gonna hold back something you need to be a witness. I'm gonna hold back whatever it is you need to really make a difference in this world. God is gonna give you everything that you need. Second question I'd love for you to wrestle with is this. What spiritual resource are you underutilizing as you're waging war? What spiritual resource are you underutilizing? You may say, like, what is a spiritual resource? But when you think about it, if God has given us everything we need, what has God given us? Well, one thing he's given us is his word. His word is living, it's active, it corrects us, it encourages us, it rebukes us, it empowers us. Maybe you're not spending time in the word. He gives us access to come boldly before the throne of grace in prayer to find help in our time of need. Maybe you're underutilizing the resource of your access to go before the throne of God. He gives us people who can come along and encourage us and support us and lift us up and encourage us. The fact that you're in a life group is a better indication of a lot of people. Some people don't have any real spiritual support around them, but maybe you're not opening up, you're not asking for help, you're not admitting that you need someone else in your life. It could be any number of different things. It could be that there are spiritual tools, spiritual resources that are available to you that you're not utilizing. 
For me, I think that what I often underutilize is just the reality of the presence of the Holy Spirit through preaching. For example, I'll work and work and work and study and study and study and I'll obsess, but in the moment, the Spirit of God does what only the Spirit of God can do and I'm not even capable of doing it. And so, if I'm growing in my faith, I can actually not feel so much personal pressure as I prepare. But just get up and tell myself, the Word of God is living, it's active, it's powerful, it never returns void, and the Holy Spirit can do something I'm not capable of doing. And so that's probably what I'm underutilizing, is even in my own spirit, trusting the power of the Spirit of God, and that's something that I've been working on. Let's not just name what it is you're underutilizing it, but let's go ahead and utilize it. So the question that will lead to that application is, what spiritual resource are you underutilizing as you're engaging in the spiritual battle? All right, warriors, let's bring some application because this is what really matters. We're not just hearers of the word, but we are doers of the word. Thought number one, we know that every warrior will fear failure. We've talked about our insecurity. Number two, we know that in Christ, you have everything you need to fight and win. That's incredibly good news. The third step's not so fun. We know that with God, that often a step forward starts with a step backwards. That's what happened to Gideon. He had 32,000 men down to 300. It felt like things were going backward, but God was doing something in him before something through him. We looked at the thought, and I think this is so true and so powerful, that every warrior's greatest fear is the fear of failure. What if I'm not a good dad? What if I'm not a good mom? What if I start this business and it fails? What if I lead this life group and I'm not a good life group leader? What if I serve and switch and I'm not effective with teenagers? Whatever it is, every warrior, we're engaged in a battle and we wonder, do we have what it takes? We fear failure. But at the same time, every warrior's greatest pain is regret. As warriors, we don't want to get to the end of our lives and look back and say, oh my gosh, I should have fought and won that battle. I should have been engaged. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think forward to the end of this year, and I want you to ask yourself, what would I regret most if I don't do it now? What would be my greatest regret at the end of this year if I'm not doing it now? What battle do you need to be engaged in? What war do you need to be winning? What do you need to be doing now so you don't live with regret? For example, for me, um, at the day that I'm recording this video, my fourth child, Sam, my oldest son, moved out of the house. He's moving to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to South Tulsa, for an internship under the leadership of Pastor Tommy Dawson, and this is now four of six children that have moved out of my house, and so today I'm a little bit wrecked again. I made a promise a few years ago when I recognized they do grow up and they do leave, and that is I'm not gonna regret living these years and not being there for my children. So I've been very, very intentional, more so even in more recent years that I'm having very direct conversations, um, trying to impart words of life, words of encouragement, um, offer spiritual direction, and honestly, have a lot of fun and make a lot of memories. Because at the end of this year, and more so at the end of my life, this warrior doesn't want to look back and say, oh my gosh, I missed the time that mattered most. Think about it, you're a warrior. You may fear failure, but you also, your greatest pain is regret. So by faith, you'll step into whatever you fear to accomplish what you're supposed to do to fulfill your calling to win this battle so that you don't live with regrets. Final question and this is the application. Not only are you gonna answer it, but hopefully you're going to do whatever that thing is. If you don't do this by the end of the year, what's the thing you're gonna regret the most? Let's talk about it, let's apply it, then let's leave time to pray for one another because you may fear failure, but you have everything you need to do what God calls you to do. Even if you don't feel the progress immediately, sometimes the way forward starts with a step backward. The good news is, with faith in Jesus, you can do what God calls you to do. So let's talk about it. What would be your biggest regret?